How did this brother-sister pair scam over $4 billion from investors? OneCoin OneCoin was a money heist that took billions from investors between 2014 and 2018. The brains behind this scheme was Ruzha Ignatova. Although the US government previously estimated OneCoin's take at $4 billion, there are sources that claim the worldwide take was as much as $15.8 billion as of early 2018. What made OneCoin so attractive? It was its viral commission-driven structure that helped it be sold to many vulnerable, tech-naive communities such as working-class England and South Asia. Ruja Ignatova is a well-educated woman with a PhD in European private law, and it's a good thing she has a lot of lawyer friends because in 2012, she was convicted of fraud in Germany. She was actually sentenced to 14 years in prison, but her sentence was later suspended. So what did she decide to do? Create one of the biggest scams ever, because why not? Ruja, along with her lawyer, Sebastian Greenwood, created a Ponzi scheme that had the hottest thing going on for investors at the time, blockchain. They created OneCoin, a coin that they promised to rival Bitcoin. Bitcoin's rise in value from a few cents to hundreds of dollars per coin by mid-2016 had retail investors hungry for more ways to get rich quick. Crypto 101 In case you didn't know how crypto works, the only thing you have to understand is this. Quickly, something is only valuable because other people think it's valuable. Whether it's money, diamonds, or gold, it only works when other people put value on it and trust the value can hold. For a long time, people have tried to create digital money. But everything always failed because no one could trust them. They would always need someone in charge. With someone in charge, they could manipulate the supply and there goes the concept. But Bitcoin solved that problem. It depends on a database called a blockchain. Basically, it's a giant digital book of every transaction that involves any Bitcoin. And everyone has a copy of it. Every time a Bitcoin is sent, a record of that transaction goes into everyone's book. Nobody could change it. So this means that Bitcoins couldn't be manipulated and could not be hacked. Bitcoin gave way for the potential to change how banking works. Bitcoin with its blockchain became a game changer. The pitch. What Ruja knew was that the average person wanted to get rich fast. And with Bitcoin's fast rise, she knew that she had something to see to the masses. The scam was predicated on enthusiasm and a quick sell. All of the talks geared around how the people were so lucky to be getting in at that stage. Ruja would pitch that one coin would be like Bitcoin. It's going to go bigger. Ruja would spin her background of a degree from Oxford, a PhD from Constance, a stint with the respected management consultancy McKinsey. Who knows if all that was true, it probably wasn't. Her main thing was to take advantage of the fact that the average person she was pitching to just didn't understand what they were investing. What's a blockchain? Who knows? Does it even need to exist? No. Even if it did, what did it do for one coin? Who cares? The coin was going to the moon. Seriously, the thing is this. If you don't understand how a specific investment makes money, you should not invest in it. MLM Recruits Ruja would also specifically recruit experienced multi-level marketers. We'll go through a super quick rundown on how multi-level marketing works. Basically, let's say you're selling makeup. Whatever makeup you sell, of course, you keep 100% of the profits. But let's say if you bring in someone else into the business, then you get a percentage of their sales too. And whoever they bring in, you would get a cut too, and so on. This type of business is actually legal, but if you think about it, it basically operates as a pyramid scheme because only a small number of people make a lot of money and it's the people at the bottom doing all the work. And Ruja would bring in these types of people on purpose. She recognized that established multi-level marketing sellers with a huge base had the perfect type of people to market her fake coin. This was the secret of OneCoin's success. It was an old-fashioned pyramid scheme masqueraded as a coin with a future. Company Holdings OneCoin's corporate structure was incredibly complicated. Obviously, it was on purpose. 
For example, Ruzsa bought a property in Central Sofia. Technically, it was owned by a company called One Property. One Property was owned by another company called Risk Limited. That company was owned by Ruzsa, but was then transferred to some unnamed Panamanians, but it was still managed by another company called Paragon. And Paragon was owned by another company called Artifix, which was owned by Rouge's mother, Veska. And back in 2017, the ownership of Artifix was sold to an unknown man in his 20s. Is this needlessly complex? Yes, if you're running a legitimate business. But it's absolutely necessary if you're running one of the biggest scams the world has ever seen. OneCoin's business. This scam quickly became one of the biggest scams the world has ever seen. What exactly was the main business? Because really, just having a blockchain doesn't mean anything. OneCoin's main revenue was supposedly from selling educational materials for trading. Members were able to purchase educational materials for exorbitant prices ranging from 100 euros to 118,000 euros. Obviously, no one was buying any sort of educational packages. There was absolutely nothing that the company came out with to generate revenue. Their only way to get money was to pitch investing in the company. For every package that gets purchased, game tokens, which the buyers can use to mine coins. Basically, the more money you spent, the more tokens you got, which meant the more coins you could mine. And the only way of exchanging the mined one coins was through one coin's own exchange. In early June 2016, Ruja Ignatova walked on stage at Wembley Stadium in London in front of thousands of investors. She told the cheering crowd that OneCoin was on course to become the world's biggest cryptocurrency, quote, for everyone to make payments everywhere. To some people, it sounded like free money that would give them the financial freedom they're looking for. And all they had to do was hand over their money to invest and not worry about anything else. Duped investor. Plenty of people were convinced. For example, Jen McAdam, she invested 10,000 euros herself. Not only that, she persuaded family members to put in an additional 250,000 euros. People from over 175 countries invested back in 2016. Investors on the lower packages were convinced to invest in bigger packages because of the extra benefits. Of course, investors were shown the growth of their investments. The horrible truth was that those rising numbers were totally meaningless. They were just numbers typed into a computer by OneCoin employees. Jen was constantly told she was part of the OneCoin family. She had a OneCoin leader who got information from the headquarters in Bulgaria. And her leader prepared her carefully for conversations with any OneCoin skeptics. Any criticism or awkward questions were actively discouraged. This is basically how cults work. You always have to be able to think for yourself, no matter the situation. Horest Investors Here's the worst part. Remember when we said that OneCoin targeted tech-naive communities? Well, typically that also means poor. OneCoin targeted the poorest people because they're typically the people who were the least educated. For example, thousands of Ugandans bought into OneCoin. It took 700,000 Ugandan shillings, or roughly $250, to buy a OneCoin starter package. Poor investors became increasingly important to OneCoin. That's because in Europe, less money was invested in the first six months of 2017 compared to the same period of 2016. But in Africa, the Middle East, and in India, it was the complete opposite. As the money started drying up in Europe, promoters turned more and more to third world and emerging countries. When it comes to running a scam, they don't care who it is they scam, rich or poor, it doesn't matter. CTO Recruiting there were many people that doubted OneCoin as early as 2015. One such person was Bjorn Björk. After actually getting recruited by OneCoin, he investigated deep within the company. They had wanted him to be chief technical officer for them, so he did due diligence on them. And he became one of the first people to discover that there was no blockchain at all. There wasn't anything invested in any technology. Of course, when you're dealing with a scam involving billions of euros, there are going to be people that didn't want him to blow the whistle. According to Bjorn, he learned in his research that Ruja had never expected OneCoin to grow so big. It was never supposed to be a billion dollar scam. 
she actually tried to shut it down, but people in the underworld that she was connected to wouldn't let her since they were making so much money. Anyone that was interviewed about their involvement wouldn't discuss any of the players involved with organized crime except for one person. Too much. One coin grew to 10 million, then quickly to 20 million, then 30 million, and it just quickly snowballed into the billions. And with all the publicity stunts and all the investor money rolling in, one day, Ruja just disappeared. She was famously punctual. She was supposed to show up and talk at a European one coin promoter meetup in Lisbon, Portugal in October 2017. This was where she was supposed to answer brewing questions of why payments had been delayed. But she never showed up. However, even when she disappeared, the scheme didn't end. OneCoin kept running despite the controversy surrounding the scam. Konstantin Ignatov. And this is where her brother comes in. Konstantin took over as CEO of OneCoin. He continued in the footsteps of his sister even with the Ponzi scheme controversy going on. Let's be serious here. Does this guy look trustworthy? Also, really, he has the word con start his name. This simulation we're living in has a good sense of humor. Constantine continued the scam and promised to take OneCoin above and beyond. He promised that an IPO of OneCoin would occur sometime between 2018 and 2019 and would make everyone rich. Obviously, the IPO repeatedly postponed and it never took place. The Aftermath In March of 2018, Konstantin Ignatov was at LAX waiting to fly back to Bulgaria after some OneCoin meetings in the US. Just as he was boarding his flight home, FBI agents arrested him and charged him with fraud in connection with OneCoin. Ruja is still missing today. The last confirmed report is that she had flown to Athens back in October of 2017. She officially charged in absentia with money laundering. Her partner and lawyer, Sebastian Greenwood, was arrested around the same time as her brother. It's interesting seeing how her brother and her lawyer weren't smart enough to disappear. During his trial, Constantine gave up information about his sister. According to him, she had gotten a passport and asked him to get her plane tickets to Vienna, Austria, and then Athens, Greece. Where is she today? Who knows? She can't run forever. One day, what she did will catch up with her. Constantine eventually pleaded guilty in November 2019 to several charges that included money laundering and fraud as part of a plea deal. Yep, he decided to rat out his associates in the underworld. According to official court documents, at least he has the option of going in the witness protection program. The truth about people. Just how did so many people get duped? Scammy sales tactics and persuasion. People fell hard for the time-sensitive sales tactics, and once they bought in, they were all in. It's psychology at this point. People don't want to admit they were ever wrong, so they just double down. No matter what the evidence is, it's just human nature to protect their reputation, intelligence, and identity. The fact of the matter is, the vast majority of people make irrational decisions. Then they rationalize their decision-making afterwards to make themselves feel better. Even more amazingly, even after Ruja, Constantine, and Sebastian were officially charged, people continued to invest in the coin. Despite all the evidence, investors simply just didn't want to miss out on the next big thing. Going for them was hope and prayers. Watch this next video to find out just how one guy was able to scam investors of almost $40 million using an extremely sophisticated but simple con.